Our fifth and final speaker is Alex Clemenson. Alex is majoring in sociology with a concentration in human services. If you know him even a little bit, you know that he has been valiantly working to combat his deep introvert nature and uh, working against his, temp his, uh, his shyness, all right? Uh, despite that, uh, he has become the president of the student body and his bucket list uh, includes a, a quite small item of starting a world movement. Uh, he may start that this evening with his talk entitled, The Time I Met a Superhero. Please welcome Alex. So you guys heard my first question. So now I'm gonna tell you a story about not something that I did, but something I experienced. And again, it's entitled, The Time I Met a Superhero. So this past December, when I went on a service trip to a children's medical hospital in Iowa, I had the chance to really get to know the hospital, kind of get a feel for all the rooms and learn all the special language. And I got one of the child life specialist badges and I was walking through swiping at doors and pretending like I knew what I was doing. I may have got lost in the biohazard room once, but that's like a completely different story. The time I'm gonna talk about is the time that I encountered a superhero. So when you go to a children's hospital, you see all these families working together, sleeping in lobbies, just spending time with one another, trying to be present and trying to be there with one another. Well, we got the chance to actually work with some of the kids who had been in the hospital, whether they were just admitted or they had been there for a longer period of time. And one of the kids that I really got to spend time with, his name was Super G. And his name was Super G because everyone saw this little kid as a superhero. He was battling leukemia, but you couldn't tell. He was jumping all around the room. The doctors were like, don't sit on the floor. He was laying on it. Like he was doing anything he wanted. And when the sign said, do not exit, he ran for it. Like this kid was everywhere. When I first met Super G, I had to walk in the room and you had to do uh, whatever the sign told you. So if the sign said, put the full gown on, gloves and a mask, you'd do that every time you went in and out. And so it was Christmas day. And so that day, everybody got to, get, got to get gifts and got to do stuff with the dance marathon group that had actually come to the hospital to help the kids get different Christmas Day presents. So I walked into Super G's room, and again, he's bouncing on the bed, he's watching SpongeBob, he's playing with Legos, he's trying to hold his baby brother that's about his size, and he's, his mom is just on the side, just like laying down, like she's yelling, but she's not moving, you know, one of those things. Um, and so I walk in and I try and like calm the situation. So like I'm holding a baby in one arm, I've got a kid jumping and like me pushing him down in the other arm. Like a baby throws up on me, you know, it was a, it was a solid moment for me. Um, but I leave and I come back. And when I come back, all his signs are down. He had been cleared. I was gone for maybe five minutes and all of a sudden you can walk in and out of the room. Like no mask, no gloves, no gown, no anything. So that was super exciting. Well, I didn't know what kind of trouble that was gonna cause. So Super G decides that it's his time to break free. He had been in the room for a solid two hours awaiting test results and he had to get out of there. So we're getting ready to leave and all of a sudden the nurse is like, Super G, it's time for your medicine. You know, you have to put the IV in and all this stuff. And I had an IV once, I saw it and I almost passed out like from looking at it. But this kid, he's just, just standing there. He just like puts his arm out and then he walks away. Note that it's like tethered to a machine, and so he's like pulling and he's like walking with it. And I'm like, okay, this isn't safe. Like, can you do this? And the nurses are just like, oh, no, he's fine. Like, let him go, like do, do whatever. So we go down to the Christmas room. It's maybe like a 20 foot walk away from where we are, but you know, I'm with the superhero, so we decide we're gonna gun it. So he hops on the IV cart and we start running down the hall. And let me tell you, 
we made it, all right? Nobody saw us, we were clean, it was smooth, don't have to worry about it, he was safe. I have my defense from driving, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> And just from that moment on, he didn't leave my side. No matter where we went, like whether it was to the playroom or it was back to his room, like everything he did, he was enthusiastic about it. Like he had just been having medicine and all the stuff that's supposed to wear you out, and he's just wired. Like, I'm tired. He's like, Mom, get Alex some brownies. Mom, do this. Mom, do that. And I'm like, you're six. You need to calm down. <laughs> like, let's just, let's wind it back. And just, it was so incredible just to see this little kid be able to do so much. Like, here he is battling cancer and taking on probably the greatest challenge of many people's lives, and he's nailing it. Like, nothing phases him, it doesn't bother him, like, he's okay with it, and then we're running up and down this, like, just this little walkway, and I'm tired, I'm like laying on the ground, I'm like pretending like he's not there, like if I play hide and seek, maybe he won't see me, and it doesn't work, and I just, was so impressed by how this kid was able to just not only beat cancer and fight it, but was able to do it with such passion and enthusiasm. He made all the characters that I watched as a kid seem ridiculous. He wasn't wearing spandex or underwear on the outside of his pants. Like, this kid is just himself. And he was just so enthusiastic about life that it was probably the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And he had this wristband that said, Fighting the big C with Super G. And every day, like, I was wearing it and like, using it as like, motivation, like, thinking to myself, if he can beat cancer, I can beat anything. And that's the time I'm in a superhero.